Hey, what's up guys? It's Marvel vs. DC Fight here, and today I'm going to do my Captain America Civil War movie spoiler review. So before we get into the review, I first want to say, I want to say two things. First of all, I'm sorry for how late this video is. I actually am re-recording it. I meant to, or I was going to try to get this up last weekend or the weekend before this video is up. Um, but I have tons of study, or tons of like finals to study for. I have a project to work on and stuff like that. So I won't be getting it up the weekend that I filmed it, which was last weekend. And I did have another one that I recorded that I was hoping to get up two weekends ago, but it was really bad. And plus I was putting up all like my other videos and stuff, so I never did get around to putting my review up, which kind of stinks, but oh well. So now I'm going to go ahead and do this video. Uh, so obviously this is my spoiler. The second thing is this is my spoiler Captain America Civil War review, so there will be spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen this movie, please exit now, or at least if you don't care about spoilers, then go ahead and keep watching it. I'm sure most of you have probably seen it by now, it's been three weeks since the release date. So the first time I saw it was uh, just regular, I saw it on opening day, actually May 6th, or I guess kind of second opening day, then the second time I saw it was just yesterday, or I guess last weekend. Uh, it was Saturday the 14th, if I'm correct. Um, yeah, and I saw it in 3D. Uh, also, before it started, there were three trailers that I was really excited about. I saw X-Men Apocalypse trailer, uh, Doctor Strange trailer, and Rogue One trailer, which is really awesome to see all of them in 3D, especially Doctor Strange. That one looked awesome in 3D. I just want to say that now. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to talk about the 3D that much. Uh, I just want to say real quick that it wasn't the best because it kind of hurt my eyes a lot with all the action scenes and stuff. But it was still cool. So first off, I'm going to talk about the story. So at the beginning, they obviously fight off Crossbones. And basically, just right off the bat, Crossbones dies. Which, um, I'll get into the characters later. But I didn't like Crossbones. I'll just say that now. Um, so yeah, and then... Basically, the whole movie is about the aftermath of kind of that happening in Nigeria, uh, where the 11 Wakandans died, and of course, Sokovia, New York, Washington, D.C., and all that. Of course, Scarlet Witch is pretty upset about all these events, but all, she ends up on Team Cap because, you know. <laughs> so anyway, after that, you have um, Tony, who kind of gets the Secretary of State, General Ross, Thunderbolt Ro Secretary of State Ross, I don't, I don't know, um, to uh, propose to them the Sokovia, Act, um, Sokovia Accords, which basically says that they need to be put in check by the government, and yeah, so the government will basically control them. Now, I was on Team Cap, so this might be a little biased, but uh, yeah, so then basically they kind of just start getting into debates and split up there, whether they should sign it or not. We, of course, get some stuff then with Bucky, uh, Baron Zemo kind of just, like, explodes the meeting where they were supposed to sign it, like, literally explodes it, uh, but he's, like, disguised as Bucky, so everyone thinks it's Bucky, uh, so then they start fighting about that, too, so there's just, like, two major fight scenes, the airport and then the final one, both of them were about Bucky and the Sokovia Accords, uh, so, yeah, um, Basically, nobody really ends up winning the airport battle. Uh, of course, Bucky and Captain America escape to go uh, find Zemo, where Tony finds out that Bucky killed his parents because he follows them there, and she kind of kills, or not kills, uh, tries to kill Bucky. And of course, Captain America is thrown into that since Bucky is his friend. So yeah, the story was amazing. It was a great uh, story. Uh, Compared to the comics, there was a lot of things that were changed, but I still think that it was still a pretty good story, and a lot of people are complaining about how it wasn't true to the comics, but I mean, it was still a great movie, and plus, how do you expect it to be true to the comics, where you can't make the registration, well, I guess you could kind of make the registration acts, but it wouldn't make total sense, I guess, um, but you can't, you don't have, like, any of the characters needed, uh, of course, you don't have any of the mutants, 
so at none of the X-Men, uh, you don't have like, basically a lot of people, you were, or we were lucky that we actually got Spider-Man thrown into this, because Sony, of course, owned them until they sold them over to Marvel, kind of, um, and yeah, so we were actually lucky that we got Spider-Man in this, so the people who say it wasn't true that comics are right, but also wrong. They tried to stay as true to the comics as they could. Of course, in the movie, all the characters did have their own reasons why they were on the sides they were. So if there were changes of sides to the comics, like, for example, Spider-Man never switched sides. Um, I can't really think of anything else. Or Ant-Man was on Iron Man's side. It was because of the, basically just their, uh, like reasoning for the movies like you can't just throw I mean I guess you could throw Ant-Man onto Tony's side because Ant-Man just like signed up for whatever side he could he didn't even know what he was fighting for really so yeah the story was really good having the um just different battles I guess it was it was kind of like a different feel to the movie kind of like uh where a soldier where rather than you just get tons of backstory and build up to one final huge battle scene between the hero and the villain you have a few major like battle scenes throughout the movie and just a different setup kind of which i prefer over the other one that i just talked about and winter soldier kind of had that too um of course there was one major battle at the end but honestly it didn't really feel like the major battle the major battle to me was honestly the airport battle uh but yeah so uh, it had a, it was definitely a unique story, uh, unique, like, I guess, plot build out, like, design, plot design, uh, so, it was a great story, though, um, yeah, so, now going into the characters and actors and how they performed, um, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about each of the characters and just, or each of the main characters and just talk about how I thought, or what I thought of them, starting out with Team Cap. So obviously I'll start out with Chris Evans, Captain America. Uh, Chris Evans, of course, was great as Captain America, just like usual. Um, he was probably one of the best parts of this movie. His a um, action scenes were really good. Uh, we got to see him with Bucky a lot and the build up of their relationship, which is really good to see in a movie. Um, yeah, I. Captain America, of course, is my favorite Avenger, uh, so it was just really cool to see him in this movie alongside other Avengers fighting um, Team Iron Man. So like I said, Chris Evans did a very great job portraying Captain America as usual. Uh, he was definitely one of the better parts of the movie, or best parts of the movie. Uh, and then moving on from that, Bucky, Sebastian Stan did an amazing job at portraying Bucky. We got more foreshadowing of a possible Bucky becoming Captain America in this movie. And we got a build up of the re relationship between Captain America's two biggest friends, Bucky and Falcon. Uh, we got, <laughs> it was a great relationship between those two. Uh, just the like, I don't know you know uh, it was just really great to see those two in the same movie uh both being good guys and bucky kind of was just the main it was one of the things they're fighting over because of course baron zemo was trying to target him and he did have some evil moments again with those words uh some were like homecoming fright car nine one seventeen um i don't know the order of them though so yeah so he would just become evil at some parts but then having him just be a good guy again was really great to see his action scenes were great too his fight with black panther uh was a great scene so yeah moving on from there we have falcon uh falcon was another great part of this movie again anthony mackie did a great job portraying him like he did in winter soldier uh we got some more uh i guess fight scenes with him in this movie so that was really cool to see then i mean basically him and bucky's reasons for being on team cap were just because they were cap's friends uh they didn't really have any other you know devotions other than that uh, Captain America, of course, didn't want to be controlled by the government, so that was his reasoning. Then, next up is Scarlet Witch, who also, I guess, didn't really like being controlled, but kind of Hawkeye just picked her up for Team Cap. Um, 
so of course I was so, kind of surprised Scarlet Witch didn't end up on Team Iron Man because uh, she was basically the whole movie upset about how it was her her fault in Nigeria and um, Sokovia and all that but again she was a great part so yeah she was just really good you got to see her and just see her struggles between Team Cap and Team Iron Man whether she should basically go on Team Iron Man because of all the bad stuff and kind of see her learning to control her powers and just things like that and also her build up with the relationship between her and Vision uh, was really nice to see especially because it kind of I guess it's a reference to how they were once actually married in the comics so yeah, hopefully we'll see some more build up between their relationship in future films such as Infinity War and yeah. So moving on, then we have Hawkeye who wasn't really in the movie for most of the uh, time except for when Cap ended up like calling him to pick up Scarlet Witch and Ant-Man. Uh, I don't really know, he didn't really have any reason to be on Team Cap, I guess. I mean, he probably did, but it was kind of hard to like tell really. Uh, he just kind of end up disappointed his kids and just like left his family so yeah uh after retiring seeing him coming back was pretty awesome um just seeing more action films with him were, was cool they are actually marvel is actually trying to make us like him better which i think is working he has a pretty good character now i mean thor his character is pretty bland uh avengers he had an okay character but still he wasn't like near my favorite um Age of Ultron, they started making us like him, but it seemed kind of forced. But in Captain America Civil War, you just really loved him as a character without even realizing it. So, um, Jeremy Renner did a really good job with that. And just, yeah, so seeing his kind of relationships with Ant-Man and just Scarlet Witch and others were was just really good to see. Moving on, Ant-Man, probably my favorite member of Team Cap. Uh, seeing his relationship with Falcon after what happened in uh, Ant-Man the movie was really good to see how they uh, they kept referencing that with like Tic Tac and um, stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, yeah, Ant-Man was great. His giant man, obviously, that was my favorite scene of the whole movie. He was just a funny character, uh, like when he was on um, Hawkeye's Arrow and then goes into Iron Man suit and he's like, <laughs> just, he was a funny character of the movie, uh, definitely one of my favorite parts. Him, Black Panther, well not really Black Panther actually, him, Spider-Man, uh, yeah those two were my favorite characters of the whole movie. So that was Team Cap. Team Cap was obviously the one I was on going into the movie and the one I was on coming out. So seeing them just all fight together for what they kind of think is right was cool. Then now Iron Man, of course, Robert Downey Jr. did a great job portraying Iron Man again. Um, uh, Iron Man was on the government side in this because of his talk with the one lady who thinks that they murdered like her son in Sokovia and they basically think that they need to stop this and they need to let or he need, he thinks that they need to stop this and just to let the government control them so they don't have to take all the blame for everything that's happened which again I disagree with because again you need the right to choose some things and of course like Cap said you save as many people as you can but sometimes that doesn't mean everybody but if there were not, no Avengers and there was still Ultron I mean you would have much more deaths than just like 146 I think it was in Sokovia or maybe it was like 200 I don't know uh, I forget how many deaths there were there but if the Avengers weren't trying to like stop Ultron then yeah but of course Tony did create Ultron and he feels bad for that but yeah so Iron Man was a great character of this movie his new suit uh, Mark I don't even know what Mark it is I think it was like 46 or something yeah I think it might have been 46 was obviously a um, reference to the bleeding edge suit I think that's what it's called and it was just really cool with all the like lights all over his suit and all that stuff we got more Friday which isn't as cool as Jarvis but it's great that we do have vision now 
Uh, so, yeah, Iron Man did really nice in this movie, except he was kind of, like, annoying in the last battle scene, because, like, it wasn't... In my opinion, they should... Or, when Iron Man found out that Bucky killed his parents, he shouldn't have been fighting Bucky and Cap and trying to kill Bucky, because it wasn't Bucky's fault, it was Hydra's fault. They should be trying to stop Baron Zemo and other Hydra agents just that can have ever like really controlled Bucky or made him do anything bad uh it wasn't Bucky's fault so I mean he was a little whiny at the end and kind of made me hate him but in a good way uh so yeah uh moving on we have War Machine War Machine of course kind of stuck with Iron Man and of course being part of the government he's obviously on the side of government control uh he obviously got paralyzed in the battle scene, but seeing his like relationship with Iron Man build up was kind of great, especially at the end with the Tony Stink reference or Tony Stink not reference uh, cameo by Stanley. That was a really great part. So War Machine, uh, another great part of the movie. He was in it for a uh, pretty good amount of time. Uh, then Black Panther. A lot of people are saying Black Panther is one of the best parts of the movie. I don't think he was one of the best parts of the movie. I think he was pretty cool. or I think he was really cool, but I didn't think he was like amazing or anything. His suit was awesome. His fighting action scenes were awesome. And Chadwick Boseman did do a great job at portraying him, but it wasn't, he wasn't like just one of my favorite parts. He's definitely nowhere near my favorite Avenger. I still have Ant-Man, Spider-Man, Captain America, uh, Iron Man even, all of them I have above him. Um, I honestly, I might make a video about that too. Uh, so yeah, um, then after that is Black Widow. Black Widow uh, was kind of the wild card of this movie. She started out on Team Iron Man for most of the movie. Uh, kind of agreeing with what they had to say, uh, but was kind of like the one who didn't exactly agree with Tony's point of view, and then at the end, she realized that Tony's side was wrong, and then she helped out Captain America and Bucky escape to find that, or to find uh, Zemo and stop this. So, Black Widow was very good. Scarlett Johansson, of course, did a very great job at playing her like usual. Uh, yeah, then moving on to Vision, of course I've already said a lot about Vision and how her, er, him and Scarlet Witch kind of, their like relationship kind of build up, which was pretty nice to see, of course, like I said, Vision was just another great part of the movie, his like cooking, that was pretty funny. Now Spider-Man, Spider-Man was definitely my favorite part of this whole movie, I just think that Tom Holland portrayed him very well. Um. He just did a great job as Spider-Man and stayed as true to the comics as possible. His suit looked like he was pulled directly out of the comics, except for some of like the winning and stuff. Um, his just quippiness was amazing. Like I just loved Tom Holland, Spider-Man. I am so excited for Spider-Man: Homecoming. It is actually the film I'm the most hyped for right now, even more than Guardians of the Galaxy 2, Suicide Squad. Basically any movie that comes out before Spider-Man Homecoming, I'm a lot less hyped for now because of my hype for Spider-Man Homecoming. I don't know how to say that. So then Agent 13 was pretty cool to see in the movie. Her relationship with Captain America was kind of cool, I guess. It was kind of, I don't want to say it was forced because it wasn't really forced, but it was just kind of weird because it's his old girlfriend's niece. So yeah, that, that was kind of weird, but it was a great relationship. She did a good job in this movie. Uh, it's great to see her like coming into more movies rather than just being in Winter Soldier. So that was really cool to see. Uh, just having her in the MCU again was pretty awesome. Hopefully we'll see more of her later on, but she wasn't really a great part. She was kind of like the government uh, secret agent on cap side kind of thing like she was the one kind of betraying the government the whole time and helping out cap side even though she wasn't supposed to be doing it and yeah so yeah crossbones and baron zemo were both really bad uh baron zemo wasn't as bad he had like some motives i guess and he i mean both of them had motives good motives of course captain america kind of well kind of dropped a building on his face um <laughs> So that was some good motives, but he was just a terrible villain because he was only crossbones for the 
beginning part of this movie before he just suicide bombed basically him and Captain America, but didn't work as Scarlet Witch saved him. So Crossbones was terrible. Baron Zemo had some motives because the Avengers killed killed their um or his uh family basically uh in Sokovia, but he just wasn't the best villain. Plus, I was really hoping he would get his mask at some point throughout the movie, and he never did. But I mean, his his like. He was kind of, he was one of those villains that he was a good villain. He just didn't really do what most villains do, which is fight the heroes. He kind of just made the heroes fight themselves, which is good, but not that good. I didn't really think he was that good of a villain. Uh, I'm, I honestly hope that he comes back as a better Baron Zemo with, I mean, he wasn't even a Baron. He was just Helmet Zemo. So, yeah. Uh... Yeah, so I'm hoping he comes back in in a future film as a better Baron Zemo, possibly like, I don't know, maybe in Avengers Infinity War, because I'm sure we'll have more than one villain in those movies. Uh, so yeah, that's all of the characters. Now back to the action. The action in this movie was amazing. They had tons of fight scenes, and it was great. It wasn't like just stuffed full of fight scenes and just terrible it all the fight scenes made sense and they were great we had the black panther uh bucky one which was amazing then we had the black panther bucky captain america chase just like the whole thing was amazing then you had of course the airport battle and then you had the final battle all of them were awesome to see uh just the action this was a great movie for action which is another reason why i love it because yeah, sorry. I love uh, movies with tons of action in them. So, yeah. And then the final final thing I'm going to talk about is the CGI. Um, well, second final thing I'm going to talk about is the CGI. The CGI was pretty good in this movie, except for some parts. I still can't get over, like, the parts where... Or at the airport battle when Tony's like, we don't need to start a conversation. I, I don't know what it is, but it just looks, like, too fake. I mean, it's obviously CGI, but it, it just wasn't that good at that part I didn't think personally um so yeah but mostly the CGI was good some of the things just looked really fake and you could tell they were fake but mostly like in most of the movie the CGI was amazing so yeah that's about all I have to say overall I'd give this movie about a 9.5 out of 10 there were some flaws uh, of course the villains um, and other things, so I will have two more videos coming out this week. Oh, wait, wait, before I talk about that, uh, the post credit scenes. Uh, Spider-Man, or, er, first one was at Wakanda, basically Bucky just went under because they didn't want to kill more people, uh, he wants to get the stuff out of his mind, and it's basically Black Panther's way of repaying, uh, Captain Bucky after, you know, what he did because he realized that it wasn't Bucky who killed his parents, and yeah, so that was a pretty cool postcard scene, but my, unlike most people, my favorite one was the Spider-Man one where you got to see the spider light, because it got me really excited for Spider-Man. Now, the first time I saw the movie, almost everyone stayed for both post-credit scenes, both post-credit scenes, which made sense because it was opening night, so all the geeks were coming. Then the second time, though, it was when, like, most of the geeks had already seen it, and there was just, like, me, my dad, and four other people who stayed uh, through the second one, only like, there was like 30 people there, only 15-ish stayed for the first post credit scene, then almost everyone else left except for us six who watched the final one, so it was kind of like weird, and I was like, but you know, uh, so yeah, it was a great movie, I give it 9.7, or 9.5 out of 10, sorry, uh, yeah, so, I also have two more videos coming out this weekend. Uh, one is going to be about the future of the MCU. The other one is going to be uh, me ranking my or the movies in the MCU. I might also actually come out with another video maybe this weekend, maybe next weekend, maybe some, somewhere throughout this week probably because uh, it's finally summer vacation for me. So I will now be able to post tons more videos. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, it's really exciting just to be able to post more videos because I've with school it's been hard to because always I have like homework or uh, just other stuff so normally all my videos as you guys have probably noticed come out on Saturdays now they will be distributed through the week which is pretty awesome so hopefully this summer I can build up my YouTube channel get more subscribers more videos and more 
stuff. So yeah, uh, that's about it. Uh, well, the other video that I'll be coming out with is my or all the MCU characters ranked or heroes ranked. Um, so that's all I have to say. So thank you guys for watching this. Uh, like and subscribe and tell me what you guys thought about this. I'm working on making my movie reviews a bit better. My Batman v Superman, that Batman v Superman one was way too long and dragged out. I thought, and I just kind of told you guys the whole plot, which is pretty boring. So, uh, tell me what I can change. Uh, hopefully, I can make my movie reviews be really good someday. This was still not that great. I actually had a kind of thing that told me what I was going to talk about, so tell me what you guys thought, uh, get ready for the two or three other videos coming out this weekend slash week, um, thank you guys for watching, see ya.